<laughs> four Galilean moons, the four moons that are big enough to not be called dwarf moon. Um, so it's a, a, I think I remember the word, Io, either Europa or Ganymede. I want to guess Europa, <laughs> Ganymede, and then Callisto. Um, those are the moons that Galileo found with his little telescope. And um, and your text, your textbook and lecture slides kind of give you some descriptions of these. Io is a, it's a volcanic moon, and we think it retained its heat from the, the tidal interaction with the Jupiter. The kind of um, the squeezing of uh, Io uh, must have generated some uh, frictional heat that allowed it to be hot enough. So this is a geologically active. If someone asks for a moon that is still geologically active, that would be Io. Um, and Europa is, I think, our best uh, current to hope for finding liquid water in the solar system other than Earth. Um, so actually, missions sent to Jupiter are usually uh, very careful about not contaminating Europa. I think we, um, the textbook and the lecture slides mentioned about the Galileo mission, where the Galileo spacecraft, at the end of its uh, mission life, Instead of being left in orbit to until it you know runs out of power or something, it was actually crashed into Jupiter so that it wouldn't accidentally crash with the Europa. Yeah, it, it was important to us that we preserve it in its current form. Um, so let me uh, I'm gonna turn around a little bit so that um, let's see, can I? I think I need to turn off the tracking to do this. Uh, I want to. Um, Let's see. I think I was fine where I was. Uh, this is not the better view. Yeah. So let me uh, just be on this side, looking at the bright side of Jupiter. And what I want to do is I want to advance the time until I see, um, until um, when there's a chance of one of these moons casting a shadow on Jupiter. Io is the most likely one to do it because it's so close to Jupiter, um, but we'll see. So right now I need to advance the time. So let me just make the time go a little faster and I'll slow it back down when one of the moons are closer to being in front of Jupiter. Oh, oh yeah, and you can kind of see that Jupiter itself is rotating as well. It rotates pretty fast. It's, uh, um, it's got faster spin than Earth. Um, Okay, let's see here. Oh yeah, I think, okay, I see Io's shadow. So I, I was playing with this uh, on Tuesday in preparation of the uh, session and I was uh, looking at Jupiter and seeing a black dot and Jupiter doesn't have a black dot, what is that? And it took me a while to figure out that that black dot must be shadow of Io. That um, and uh, yeah, there are a lot of photos of that. So I think uh, what I think I can simulate here uh, that would be kind of a view that um, that's a very hard to capture in real life. So we'll do this with the simulation is to show what it would be like to see the solar eclipse on from on Jupiter or you know near the Jupiter, like up just barely above the atmosphere and uh, looking towards the uh, it, one of its moons and see if uh, what the solar eclipse looks like. So I need to aim this, can I? Okay. Um, yeah, I can use one of the shortcuts because I have to actually land at that spot. All right. Uh, I think I landed, oh yeah, rotating Jupiter. So I'm now on Jupiter, let me just, uh, Turn up and look around. Yeah, so I'm in the shadow. And let me look up, looking for, ah, there's Io. Let me turn off the orbit. So this is what it would look like. Um, and so let me see if I can turn back the time a little bit uh, so that it's a little bit before. Oh, wait, wait, let me select Io and track that. <laughs> Or am I tracking the sun? Uh, that's fine. Yeah, I think. Uh, okay, so this is before, uh, well before Io starts to cover the sun. 
and um, uh, so that uh, IO coming in to be in front of the sun and eventually the electrolyte across uh, the sun. And this view confused me for a bit because it kind of looks like IO isn't completely covering the sun. But when you compare the relative, uh, like apparent size, you would see it should. So um, I think this uh, outside is supposed to represent the corona. So let me just zoom in so that um, we have a more realistic view. Yeah. So this is if you're looking at um, this uh, phenomenon with some help of a telescope or some arrangement that's uh, designed to observe solar eclipse, um, you do kind of have to be careful. You can't just to, uh, <laughs> you can. Um, so let me go back a little bit and then turn back. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's a, a truer image of the sun and um, with the corona uh, eruptions represented there. And so from Jupiter, because it's so far away, the sun is much, much smaller. In terms of their relative size, Io is similar to our moon, but compared to the sun, it will appear much bigger. So this is what solar eclipse from Jupiter looking at, um, yeah, solar eclipse by Io on Jupiter would look like. It lasts longer and yeah, it, <laughs> the moon uh, trends across. And I don't know if this uh, um, simulates it. Um, what I'm trying to look for is if, uh, yeah, I think this simulation does try to simulate it as in the, the way it shows the way it shows Io, it's a trying to show what it would uh, look like um, uh, with its a volcanic eruptions. Um, so, <laughs> but I, I do have to say this is a more of an imagination. I don't think we've had any spacecraft that's actually covered the uh, image of Io in something like this. So, anyways. Um, 